Hi friends! Welcome back to my kitchen. I am making challah today. If you watch my vlogs, you have seen on the weekends and I make challah. Um, I thought I would share my challah recipe with you. And it's a wonderful bread, a little bit of sweetness to it. It's really good. Um, and yeah, so I make it all the time and I thought that I would share the recipe. So, here we go. First things first. We want to get one and a half cups of warm water and to the water. See, my yeast is proofed right here. See, look at that. See, now it didn't look at that. See, it wasn't like that when I first put it in. It was at the one and a half cup line. My sugar and my yeast and my water was right in there. And then in mixing it up, see, then it proofs. You want to proof your yeast. And it usually takes five to ten minutes um, to proof. It doesn't take long at all. Uh, if you want to get nice, uh, fluffy, um, scrumptious bread, you really need to proof your yeast. So, um, it's one and a half cups of warm water. I put in two tablespoons of sugar because yeast and sugar are friends. They love each other. And it helps the yeast to do this if you put your sugar in your water. So, um, then it's uh, three packets of yeast. If you use the jar right here, it's obviously six teaspoons and three quarters of a teaspoon. So almost seven teaspoons. And um, so, yeah, I mix that and I set it aside till it does this wonderful thing right here. And then I come over to here where I have my bowl with my dry ingredients. In the bowl here I have four cups of flour. I have my fifth cup of flour to the side. Um, I go ahead and I put my salt in and it's one tablespoon of salt because this is going to make two good loaves of bread here. And I mix it thoroughly. <coughs> Excuse me. And then I'm going to go ahead and add the sugar. Now this is half of a cup but you see it's not all the way up because you just measure out a half of a cup of sugar and take two tablespoons of your sugar to put in your water to help your yeast um, begin to um, uh, activate and work and you can see in this little bit of talking to you how much more that has risen so I gotta hurry and get this in here so we're gonna go ahead and add the sugar and I kinda just mix all the dry ingredients around and then to this, before we put in our yeast mixture, we need two eggs and a half of a cup okay, of oil. Two eggs, half of a cup of oil. And you don't want to use olive oil or anything. You want to use straight up vegetable oil or, um, you know, canola oil. And then just go ahead and you can start mixing this a little bit. Get your eggs um, broken up and worked in. Now it's time to get this delicious looking of course I wouldn't eat it but it's delicious looking look at that get this um, yeast mixture in here and I'm going to scrape this out okay so we're going to just go ahead and mix and I always like to mix with my hands but I didn't use my tripod um, this time I using my hand to hold this camera but I am going to pause here for a minute because I've stirred as much as I can with my little whisk here. I'm going to go ahead and finish working um, all the dough together and then I'm going to begin adding my flour and turn my dough out and finish uh, working and kneading it. So I'll be right back. Okay, I've added, oh, just probably, I, I dumped in just maybe a quarter of a cup into my bowl, um, the flour. And then I've dumped out now probably about another quarter cup or so, and I still have another quarter of a cup in, or probably about a third of a cup <clears throat> left, which I will still be working in. Because it's going to take all uh, five cups of this flour for this dough. But I'm just showing you for a few minutes my whole kneading process and what I do when I knead my bread. And the more that we knead it, and it all comes together. All of this ends up coming off of your hands. And um, you'll just get a really nice dough. 
And here we go. And some days when I'm making my dough, I use the entire uh, five cups. I have just a smidge there at the bottom that I didn't use. <clears throat> Sometimes it does depend on your weather um, when you're baking, how your baked goods turn out and um, what you're really needing. I think it's the humidity in the air. I think. I don't know. Uh, but I will tell you, it's a rainy day today. So, um, I didn't use the whole five cups, so I just wanted to show you that. In other words, just take your, that's why we, I measure out the last cup of flour in bread making so that you can dump a little, work it all in, dump a little bit more, and then see where you are. So after all you're kneading, and I show you guys this all the time, you want to push on your dough. And if it begins to come back, um, you have good elasticity to the dough and that means that that's what you want that the dough is going to rise and expand very nicely so I'm going to take my dough I'm going to grease my bowl I don't rinse my bowl out I just you know put a little bit of oil in there or spray it and then I put my dough in there put a little bit of oil on top cover it with some saran and just set it aside and let it begin to rise Okay, so for challah, we braid our bread. So I've got my little loaves. You can just go ahead and put it um, the loaves like this straight away into the pan. But I'm going to go ahead and braid. So you want to get like three equal parts. So I'm going to cut those. And then each one of the parts, you're going to roll out into a long strip. <clears throat> And be gentle with it. Just lift it up, put it down, pull it. You just want to get nice little long strips and you want to make sure that it's going to fit in your pan. So there's one. And you don't have to put it in a bread loaf pan. You can just put it on a baking sheet if you like. And then what we're going to do, obviously, we're going to put these together, give it a little squeeze, and then you're just going to braid the bread like you braid So hair. there we go. This one's a little fatter on the end. That's okay. And then this one, it looks real narrow to you, but it's got to rise again. So um, I'm going to get it back over on the stove. Okay, here we are. The bread dough has risen now and ready to go in the oven. So I just have... Um, an egg wash here and just lightly lightly go over it don't push really hard because um, you don't want to deflate um, any of your dough so there's that one And note that I don't always do an egg wash. Um, egg washes people put on because it does help to make the bread a nice golden color. But you know what? It's going to be a golden color anyway. Just maybe not as dark. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is put on some sesame seed. Okay, in just a 350 degree oven. These are going to go in. And they're usually in there for about... Uh, 20 minutes but I always come back at 15 minutes too to check it out okay I cut um, the heel off of the holla it's uh, cooled down enough that I can cut it I want to pull this back so you're able to watch me cut it and watch just how easy it slices it's still actually warm but not too warm that you can't cut it and then here we go there we are every nook and cranny in there so this is how I make hollow I've had people ask me how I do it and there we go this has been a busy day hollow cinnamon rolls kugel in the oven and the kugel is the next video coming up you guys have a great day